I think a lot of times we really take eBay and their their policies, even though sometimes, many times, we don't agree with them, we take those policies for granted. And I want to talk to you about that on the other side. So without any further ado, let's go. Welcome back to the channel. This is John from Flippin' Ain't Easy. And today I want to talk to you about something that uh, I've been dealing with. Now, this is an eBay, mostly eBay channel, but I like to cover really all things reselling. And if you're an eBay reseller, kind of hang in there because uh, I want to give you some perspective here, just to give you an idea of what uh, I think what we seem to take for granted when we're dealing with eBay. And my gripe, and it's not really a gripe, so let's, let's just not say I'm, I'm whining or anything like that, but my observation is regarding Amazon FBA. So uh, this morning I woke up to some charges on my credit card and I didn't quite know what it was and it wasn't marked with anything, it was just from Amazon and I thought someone had placed an order on my Amazon buyer's account and uh, went on there, no, no one did. And I called Amazon and they said, this is from your Amazon seller account. Now, um, they were able to kind of go over that with me and it turns out to be all the stuff that I shipped into them, all the UPS charges and my monthly $40 fee all like hit at once. So that's fine. But I got into there and I had the guy in the line and I said, look, I've sold 20 of those Barbie dolls at $9.99, okay? Even though I wasn't the lowest price for those Barbie dolls, I still sold 20. But now, only three were completed. And some of these sales go back to like the 23rd of October, and they all say pending on them. So I said, what's going on here? Why, why is this pending? And he told me that it's because there could be a problem with your buyer's credit card and uh, we're waiting for them to complete the order. I said, well, normally anytime I've ever bought anything on Amazon, if uh, the credit card, there's an issue with the credit card, I'd get a message right away. And of course I'd go back in there and maybe update the, uh, maybe I had an old card on file or whatever and I just redo the payment. And I said, so what happens with these items that are pending? He's like, well, the buyer has, get this guys, 21 days to resolve the payment if that's the problem and so I have potentially up to 17 of my items that are going to be sitting in limbo waiting for a buyer to come back with payment uh, up to 21 days it takes us through most of the buying season here this is Q4 in the heart of Q4 and the last thing you want is to have your items stuck in in limbo that can't be bought by anyone for 21 days and then finally the buyer comes back or never replies at all, never follows through and then the item gets relisted you know, near the middle to end part of Q4 and that didn't sit well with me. I mean 17 of my items, now I'm sure that all 17 are going to be affected in this way but I just wanted to, to make this video to you know, try to give you guys some perspective here that uh, you, know, you get someone who makes an offer and they don't pay maybe they accept the terms maybe they you sell something on auction and they agree to buy your item and they never get back to you at least you don't have to wait 21 days to uh, you know move on from that transaction uh, there's no way I can go in here on this Amazon FBA deal and cancel these sales you know to get these items back in my inventory it's not possible and it's just frustrating now, um, with eBay, you, you guys know that after four days they don't pay, then you can go in and cancel the order due to non-payment and then relist your item. And with that in mind, guys, I just want to you guys to know if you're dealing with that kind of a situation on eBay where you have a, a non-paying buyer, don't when you go in to cancel the sale, from my experience, don't allow the system to auto relist your item. And the reason is many, many times, and I can tell you this has happened on many occasions based on my inventory check that I did a few weeks ago, many, many times those items won't get relisted and they'll just be sitting in your inventory and you think they're up for sale and they're really not. So I put no anytime that eBay asks me to relist the item and then I go in 
uh, right away to my orders and I find that old sale and I just sell similar and list it that way so that at least I know that the item has been listed. So I digress on that. Just a tip for you guys who uh, maybe have experienced that kind of thing. I don't trust eBay. Uh, I don't trust the many glitches that go on with eBay. So for me, that's how I handle it. I had a similar situation today. So I uh, wanted to talk to you about that uh, as well. But going back though, going back to the whole idea of, I think a lot of us take for granted that eBay isn't as bad as I think these videos, other channels, or even maybe our own thoughts about eBay uh, has you know led us to believe. And I'm here to tell you that it isn't as bad as it could be. If we were all under the terms of, and conditions that Amazon places on sellers, uh, I think a lot of us wouldn't even sell on the platform. And the only saving grace for me for this whole Amazon experience uh, with uh, selling these new pack toys uh, for Q4, the only saving grace is the idea that I've sold, in, well, I say I've sold, but I have 20 transactions, right? 17 of them are pending, but I have 20 transactions on these Barbie dolls, and I have these same dolls priced on my eBay account the same, and I haven't sold but one. So it just gives you an idea of the power uh, of traffic and how much more traffic Amazon has over eBay and wow I mean can you imagine having you know five to ten times the amount of traffic to your listings that you do now that's kind of what Amazon is so I guess you got to put it in kind of perspective I you know I guess there's more cutthroat there's more uh, demand to sell on Amazon there's many many people selling on Amazon and you know if they lose me as a seller it's no skin off their butt uh, they have a lot more sellers waiting to, to come on in there and sell their goods. So I don't know what to think. I'm very frustrated by the whole thing. Uh, I, you know, I guess shame on me for not learning this before I started selling. I just threw my stuff on there. And, uh, you know, it's one of those things where at least eBay sometimes puts on a face and pretends that they care about the seller. You don't see anything like that from Amazon. So I just wanted to give you guys some perspective. Oh, also, while I'm at it, you know, we talk about 30-day returns. You know, I, I, I think it's excessive. I think 7 days, 14 days is acceptable. You know, 3 days for Mercari, wow. You know, if you sell something on, on FBA, Amazon, that they're giving the buyers until the 31st of January to return your item. So we're talking, what, a good two, three months. Three months, guys, to return that item. And there's nothing you can do about it. Now, the, the positive uh, from what I read that uh, Amazon will pay for that return label, the cost of the return label, back to their facility. And then I guess they send all your returns back to you. I don't know. I think that's what it, the way it works. Maybe I'm wrong. But I just want you guys to have some perspective here. Yes. It's frustrating to have to deal with customers who will return your item on the 30th day. But during the holiday season, you only have to deal with 30 day returns. You don't have to deal with 90. And that's what a lot of sellers have to deal with. So someone can buy your item, use the heck out of it, make up a reason to return it, and you really don't have any recourse. You don't even have a refund tool on Amazon to deduct a refund because Amazon's handling all of it for you. So guys, do me a favor. Comment down below. Let me know your thoughts on this. Uh, do you really take eBay for granted in the sense that it could be worse? Yes, it could be better. And of course, I'm going to continue to advocate for that. But if we look at the scheme of things, uh, eBay doesn't even have to give us the option to set our return policies. They can just mandate it, you know, a free returns for every buyer if they really, really wanted to. And they would still have people lining up to sell on their platform. So do me a favor, if you enjoyed this content, please hit the like button. Of course, subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the channel. And of course, hit that notification bell if you wanna be notified when I drop my next video or when I go live, which is usually Mondays and Friday afternoon slash evening eBay in many cases is very frustrating. It's a very frustrating platform to sell on, but the traffic is still there. The sales are still there 
and it uh, their terms and conditions as compared to say Amazon is quite reasonable yet uh, it's still yet another example though of how sometimes flipping ain't easy and I want you guys to have an excellent uh, rest of your week we'll see you on the live on Friday and uh, have a great weekend